Hey, welcome to Shelf Starters. I'm Rosie. And I'm Kate. Hi, everyone. And today we are taking a step back in time because we messed up a little bit and <laughs> going with Edmund Spencer again, but his um, work before the Fairy Queen. So this is the Shepherd's Calendar, um, which was essentially pastoral poetry. That and was actually, as it sounds, divided into 12. Yeah, it's a calendar um, that talks about the changing seasons and it is very much about shepherds and their flock and how the yeah how the landscape around them changes and also kind of a reflection on life and the cycle Perfect. of and life and growth yes. <laughs> all of that um which is very like I mean it's it's nice imagery and things like that um essentially well, what he Rosie, was trying to interrupt. have you read all of it all the calendar or see I have only read October so yes yeah, so at this October. stage where you're talking about the calendar as a whole, it's um, the October one, of course, is quite diff It's a bit of a departure from the rest because it starts talking about the role of the poet. And yeah. it's a bit strange. It's, it's sort of talking about how, you know, it's it's, 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 yeah, <laughs> yes, it's because apparently it's, it's really Spencer himself. You know, he's reflecting on his own problem and he had issues because he wanted to be I mean really what he wanted out of poetry was fame yeah and that's what he was trying to achieve even with with the writing of the shepherd's calendar because he wanted to essentially copy the exact career path yes of Virgil. yes and he seems to be mighty annoyed that he hasn't got that yeah. prestige he hasn't achieved the that idea status. Is that, um, that he starts with pastoral poetry because Virgil also started with pastoral poetry yeah. and then he'll later move on to his epic, which is then what he did. He'll move on to the Fairy Queen. Which but is it exactly also, but in the October maybe. thing, when he take when he has these two personas, I mean, that's mm -hmm. what persona one says to persona two is literally, okay, well, you know, you want fame and fortune, then look at the content you know, and yeah. try try harder. Like make sure you write something about the Queen. And her, and her. Yeah. Um, it mentions the fair, fairy, fairy. Oh, no, Eliza. Yeah. It mentions Eliza. Yeah, yeah, which is Elizabeth, and yeah, and that's what. So it's it's actually quite hilarious, really, when you think about it. Yeah, he's no, actually Eliza. he's having so a full funny. conversation with himself, and he's actually pretending to be two people, and they're like almost they're like two halves of him, having a kind of conflict. Yeah, it's it's so it's quite that's quite interesting. But I'm really yeah. glad we accidentally read the Fairy Queen first because the Fairy Queen is so beautifully written. So we can we already have we have admiration for him for that. So when you read this, it's not so terrible then to think that he's yeah, fighting all is, the time. You know, this is hard um, to hard to like, read, hard, hard to like it all because yeah. he um, he also introduces it. It's also fake. It's all like constructed. Um, yeah, he yes. also. This uh commentary throughout it like a gloss the gloss and everything the gloss, um, really, called EK. Actually in the original text yeah with ek as though like this fictional um editor i suppose yes. is yes. coming in making comments on how clever like certain things are and it's clearly <laughs> him but the idea. <laughs> we must write that down so whenever you're writing anything that's a great idea just pretend to, that you've got a phantom editor Who's well, saying like, how marvelous all your work is? He is what he right. means here, and it's like you know, if you don't understand what he means, you shouldn't have to have an editor come along. Like, <laughs> well, I think part of the problem I mean, also explain is yourself he writes, but well, he's deliberately writing in that really archaic language, which he didn't have to do that. He wanted to do that because he was wanting to do pay homage to Chaucer, or yeah. And so no, he's using. I mean, well, yes, yes. He, it, you're, I was trying to be kind, but okay. He's <laughs> trying to, and so because of that, the the language itself is really, really difficult. I found it on first reading almost impossible to follow. Yeah. You know, I was like, what is he actually talking about? And it was a lot easier once I walked away from it and then read a little bit more about it and then went back to it. Then I was like, okay, and then I can then immerse in it and get into the swing and then I can read it but oh wow it, it's not easy stuff and it's just not and because you're right because of the tone it's not pretty so it doesn't have the same um kind of yeah that rhythm and like no I, I think the fairy queen had that kind of ethereal I don't know mystery 
thing that kind of tugs you in and um yeah. you know, like you know, we struggled to understand the fairy queen at first but we yes. ended up following completely and it was no problem that's um, right where is this just, i'm never going to i don't you know I, well, it was never that easy it became easier but it still wasn't easy i don't and I think, think there's an draw you in no there well there's no character there are no characters other than the two people talking to each other who are just having a debate that's not character you know like they're just in, engaged in debate as well that before each of the um months which they call them the oh um, yes yes um yes how did you say that rosie do you say it how did you say it eclogue uh, yes <laughs> well as in prologue i suppose yeah, eclogue is um it's a it, yeah it means a short pastoral poem in the dialogue in a dialogue form or soliloquy. yes and it certainly is a dialogue, that's correct. But, mm -hmm. and did you feel, I like, did you like one character more than the other? Uh, I think I like Pierce more than Cuddy. Cuddy yes, was annoying. Yes, because Cuddy is the whinging one. That's what I wrote. <laughs> yeah, so. Next to Cuddy's name, I wrote Winger. Because yeah. he just, he's, that's all he does. Whereas Pierce is like, look, lift your game and do these things, you know. And there's a, get on a with reference it. Just get on with Clout it. As well, Colin Clout is another character oh, yeah. from here. Yeah. And he's also standing for Spencer. So um, at some point they talk about how Colin has Colin. he's the best of the poets, and <laughs> <laughs> and how Cuddy can only hope to be as good as Colin. And that then, just you actually know, made so, me laugh. I have to say, Colin is supposed to be Spencer elsewhere. So, I, but it made me laugh out loud, mainly because <laughs> the, name, the name Colin didn't sound, you know, hugely poetic. It just sounded like Colin. It's yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> Virgil made, there. Yeah. yeah it just made me laugh um anyway I think the most interesting thing this is a bit brutal but I think the most interesting thing about the shepherd's calendar is the little pictures the engravings <laughs> the wood the wood the wood <laughs> engravings I love those also yes yeah. and they have that they have the star sign at the top yeah so you can is, see what month it is so you can tell the month uh, and these were and actual wood it. wood engraving things aren't they yeah so yeah, Where can, are, like, are they do they exist in the world like are they yeah i'm sure that maybe they're we can maybe when you come to london we can go to the british library and see if yeah. we have them there if they're, that's or where they even are, but... or even at cambridge because that's where he went they um, might be they might have them there it, was Irish, so he, it might be somewhere in ireland but who knows we'll find out if I'd anyone knows see those. I, would love it. Yeah, I think that would be great because i agree that was actually one of the highlights definitely was the yeah the the picture of the wood carving. Yeah. The, I, look, it's like a bit of an advent calendar, really. Yes, it's like a combination <laughs> between an advent calendar and like, like it feels like, you know, when you're in school and yes. they give you like a prompt to write yeah. something or like a, a writing exercise. Oh. I feel like, <laughs> yeah, like a, respond to this image. <laughs> that's something yeah. that's inspired by. Yeah. 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 yeah like, like he's just, he's just testing out his skills. It's not like his his big moment yet. He's just trying to you know experiment a little bit. Yeah. But I, yeah. I think maybe I don't really. I mean I don't know if I like. I think I haven't read much um pastoral poetry. No. So I'm it's not, more we know about it, really, isn't it? It's more you you know you understand that because when you do romanticism, you need to understand that it's like where it comes from, and then yeah. yeah. But but that said, how much pastoral really poetry pastoral have you actually poetry. read? Yeah, not yeah, much. I um, but I, I feel like maybe I wouldn't like it. <laughs> From oh this, no, I'm like... I think I'd like the original pastoral maybe because it's 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 a nice story. Generally, it's a story of a shepherd. It's about love. It's about you know, and it's set in this beautiful rural, wow. lush yeah. landscape. So I'm sure that's lovely. But this is not that. This is about complaining and the conflict and the problems of being a poet and not being famous for it. I, I mean, honestly, my favourite line definitely in the whole thing is, <laughs> Piers, abandon then the base and viler clown, lift up thyself out of the lowly dust and sing of bloody mars, of wars, of gifts, turn thee to those that wield the awful crown, to doubted knights whose woundless armour rusts and helms un unbruised waxen daily brown. I love it. It's like, get it up and get on with it and then write something and sing them. yeah <laughs> stre stretch yourself at large from east to west whither thou list in fair eliza rest you know try that try talking about the queen give that a whirl yeah. i love that yeah 
that's the, that's where I enjoyed because that time with I, it, I it like that kind of that po- it's all about the epic kind of poetry that existed already, right? So yes, it's like you're thinking of with seeing of Mars of wars and stuff. You're thinking of the Iliad. Yeah. Um, then I though now then the doubted knights. Um, you're thinking like Chaucer or um, and he's he's uh, saying. I mean, the point is great that Piers makes. It's awesome. like you've got all this, all this fodder all of this yep. you could draw on and you're whinging out on and saying how you don't know what to do and blah, 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 and you haven't got any fame and fortune and because it's like look around like just yep. actually open up your eyes don't just sit there whinging do something i love that it makes a lot of sense i will say um you know we we read it in the wrong order um in terms of print, like chronology where we read yep. it in the wrong order but yep. um it is kind of if you were studying um if you're doing the Norton anthology like we it's are, logic. but you were doing yeah. classroom setting and you started with the shepherd's calendar and then you got a taste of the fairy queen, you'd be like, ah, this makes so much sense. Like it's kind of like yeah. a preview he worked, to what he you've worked got it to out. Do. He worked it out <laughs> and got there in yeah. the end. Thank heavens. Yeah. Lucky. Exactly. Yeah. He did yeah, get which there. Is, yes, he got there in the end. And it was, yeah, so good news. Look, it, I think it's good we did it the way we did it, even though it was yeah. accidental. I think that worked out nicely. And so, Rosie, do we have more Spencer now or have we now managed yes. to do all of it? We're going to go into it and I think these are going to be better. This, these are later poems. So um, we will be going into Amoretti and Epiphanalium. Okay. I think we can do the same session. Yes, yes. because we So we've done our mutability cantos. So, yes, we'll do that. Okay, good. Go into Amoretti and it's an epithamalian. Someone tell us how to pronounce that, please, <laughs> because we don't have long before we need to talk about it. It's an epithalamian. Epithalamian. Yeah. epithalamian. Yeah. It sounds sort of Turkish. <laughs> we'll find out what it means. Yeah. When we read it. Yeah. So yeah, that was the um the shepherd's calendar. I can't. It clearly we're not very positive about it. I can't say this is a huge recommend from us. No. But but we'd like to see the wood um, carvings. Yeah, I see the wood carvings, but that's not really showing up. <laughs> I'm not even sure if he did it. Who did the wood carvings? I don't know. Well, like I suppose you probably, that's probably like, not it'd him. be like having an illustrator, I suppose. But yeah. look, I'd like to know if, yes, I would like to know if we could go to the British Library and if it would all be there. That would be amazing. Does he know um, where these wood carvings are, if they are still around? Would be fun. Can we go? Can we go and see them? Yeah. It's not very long now until we'll be there. So much fun. All right. So next week we've got our Amoretti. Next week we have Amoretti and Epithamalian. Epith- <laughs> <laughs> One be- day we'll learn how to say it. Um, but, yeah, I'm, and I'm these excited. And these were written after he died, weren't they? I mean, after his wife died, he wrote these. I, th- I don't know. Um, but I think they're later works so i think i think the way that the um norton presents works is generally chronological so it's like it's later i think on. i think what happened was i think he spencer was married and his wife first wife died and i think he married someone else and that's when these poems fit in and that's why we've got amaretti it's not the drink <laughs> it's not amaretto it's obviously amaretti love little little love is it little love yeah. amaretti well but yeah, usually etto or something is like a little something. Yeah. So anyway, I think that's where we're at, which will be good. Yeah. I feel like it's um because it is later on, I feel like his writing will be, you know, at Even back to where better. we yeah. <laughs> So I think yeah. it's gonna be um exciting, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully I'm looking, I actually I am looking forward to that. It'll be good. Yeah. It'll be really good. Okay. Um All right. I think that yeah. So yes, yes, please. The two things for us is how do you pronounce epithelium, <laughs> and where are the wood carvings? And where are the woodcuts? If anyone knows, please let us know. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you Thank again you. next time. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>